Hi, my name is Francisco from Chat Rosteca, and you're listening to Villas Podcast. Mexicano 100% no existe ni una barrera, mucho menos no separa una frontera con papel o sin papeles. Yo vivo a mi manera, no me importa en cualquier país. Si el cielo se pone negro gris, escuchando a Gerardo Ortiz celebrando fiestas patrias con dos Genesis. Cantamos mariachi y en acapella miramos. Hey, what's up, amigos de Pancho Villas Army? El Sargento here with another episode of Villas Podcast, episode 50. Man, we're getting there little by little. We're itching away in these episodes. Dude, we're approaching the end of the year, and uh, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be an epic year <clears throat> for us because you know, a lot of people are looking for 2021. I've always said, hey, you make from it. 2021 is gonna very look very similar to 2022. It's just the opportunity is how we're gonna what we decide to do ourselves, right? It's just how we're gonna make it different for us. And uh, but for me, is all about you know introducing our guests and then wrapping up this year, man. This is our last podcast of the year. Uh, we have family. We have a lot of things we want to focus on and also prepare for 2021, bringing you new guests, new conversations, and just continue to improve, you know, what our podcast, right? So with that, I have Ivan. I have a coronel back. Uh, gentlemen, como están? Hey, what's going on, guys? Good to be back. Uh, and I'm glad to be back and getting ready to wrap up this year. I, I, just like everybody else, I think we're ready to get rid of this year. Just get it out of the way and let's start something fresh. Okay. Borone uh, Cuenta Nueva. All right, cool. Ivan, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, everybody? Glad to be back as well. And yeah, 2020 has been a little crazy, but we're going to be all right. He's going to be all right. And I see you brought your adopted son again, dude. Is he going to be oh, like a kid, frequent uh, guest to our show now? <laughs> this is you got it for, Christmas, for your birthday? Honestly, I'm just doing it to rub it in for the people that hate on the Dodgers. That's the only reason I have it. <laughs> dude, nunca tuviste sin fans, güey. No mames, dude. Hey, hey uh, Coronel, remember that video you took of him? <laughs> like, he was doing his hair, como un papá, viene acá con su hijo. Yeah, he's practicing. He's practicing. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Yeah. Oh, dude. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and go into our guest, man. So, yes. Yes. You know, I thought I was I was doing some research, you know, and I have, you know, I I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm very curious. I'm a curious. I, I look at everything, dude. And uh, one of the, you know, one of the sites and one of the um, Instagram uh, <laughs> posts and, and things that I see a lot that really motivate <laughs> me right. and just grab my attention um, is uh, Charro Azteca, dude. I, I've been looking at it. And I'm like, dude, this is so because my family at my mom's side is from Zacatecas. And I wanted to to reach out. So I, let me introduce it to him. But before we do that, let's just watch a quick introduction video of you know what he does a little bit about their story and then we'll we'll talk to him in a little bit so let's go ahead and do that right now my name is francisco galvez and i am the founder and owner of charros teca charros teca is a family-owned business we do it for our family we do it for our people so my brother that's his daughters i make sure that every single time he comes in he's looking at why he's coming in there's no bigger motivation than your offspring your daughter your son Charro Azteca's history doesn't start with me, it starts with my grandfather. My grandfather used to be at the Labarteros, used pita, a fiber, to actually make designs into leather. His career in Colotlan was to make leather goods for charros. For a whole week, two weeks, my grandpa used to just sit down and start embroidering. My father was an athlete in, in charreria. Charreria is actually Mexico's national sport, not soccer. Charreria involves nine events. We call them suertes. And my father actually became really good at every single nine events, earning him the title in competitions of charro completo. From immigrating from Mexico to here, of course, he tried to instill that on me. And my goal was always to bring that tradition, that culture to the masses here in the U.S. And I have an opportunity. At five years old, my father had to sell the horse, the gear. There is a, a bigger priority which was to survive, pay the rent, put food in our table. But he planted the seed. Well, my grandfather, father could die with my generation, with me. So I made myself a promise that I was gonna instill this culture and tradition to my son. Finding these products were very difficult, even for me. Everything that I wanted had to be made in Mexico. And with e-commerce and this new modern technology and generation, I'm able to provide this product to everybody in the country without actually having to step out of their home or driving two to three hours or cross state or even cross the border. They go into my website and they make their purchase within a couple of days, they have the product. So when someone receives their product and they see the craftsmanship of these artesanos, you get to appreciate not just their work, 
but also your culture, your traditions. You start appreciating yourself. My vision for Charros Teca is to become the biggest online authentic Mexican product retailer. We started with just a laptop on the kitchen table selling t-shirts. We moved on to my garage selling charro suits. And now we have a full warehouse that we sell huaraches, sombreros, bilingual book, air fresheners. The brand has grown to not just represent just charreria, but to represent everybody that makes artesanía mexicana possible. Charro Azteca is my grandfather. Charro Azteca is my father. Charro Azteca is myself. Charro Azteca is my son. Charro Azteca is you. Charro Azteca is everyone that wants to continue and keep our culture alive. If anybody has a burning desire to wave two flags, a Mexican and an American, I think wearing a product like this, uh, you're practically waving your flag on your wardrobe. All right, man. Let's give a warm Vios oh. man, to our guest, the CEO owner of Perro Seca, Francisco Galvez, man. Welcome. To Man, that video still chokes me up. Dude, it's a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit It's a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit my a bit of 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 be proud of American and pre be proud of Mexican or whatever, or even proud of be charro because you know it might be looked down upon. But I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw it out there. And um, I think uh, five, six years later, we've had a lot to do with the popularity of charro weddings and charro, <clears throat> and charro baptisms and the whole thing. So uh, that's that's what's fucking proud for me, you know? That that just being authentic and being yourself, like. While in social media right now, everybody is trying to be fake, trying to be someone they're not. Like, dude, just fucking be yourself. Trust me, there's people out there that you could relate to. And if you're selling a product, like, just be yourself. Trust me, people like to buy from people they like and they could relate to, you know? Right, definitely. No, I mean, it's beautiful, beautiful product. Um, amazing. I mean, obviously, a lot of us, I mean, we're all, we all have Mexican, our Mexican heritage. And <clears throat> like you mentioned, um, if, if we're if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we're it's like the movie Coco, right? Kind of yeah. like if, if you forget, it kind of dies. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that that we're losing touch. And you know, hats off to you and and for 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 realizing at a young age too that you're gonna do something about it, bro. And you're gonna continue that tradition of life, the culture. It's beautiful. And I thank you because again, without that, it, it it's inspiring. You know, it's inspiring. So and like you said, it's beautiful and a lot of. There's a lot of people that want that culture. They want to keep that culture alive, and you help provide that. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, man. And uh, and starting the whole thing, like, and I always said to myself, and I guess I was in my bubble, right? Because I grew up in Southeast LA, and fucking, if we want something, we could just go to the fucking Tiendita or Plaza Mexico or fucking Callejones, <laughs> which is fucking like an hour away, or TJ, which is two hours away. But I was so stuck in my bubble like in a way selfish that I was like, oh, well, who's going to buy it if everybody could just go to Tijuana? Mm -hmm. I threw it out there and I threw the website out there and I threw like, this is who I am. To my surprise, 90% of my business is not Arizona, it's not California, it's not Texas. It's fucking Alaska, it's Minnesota, it's Tennessee, it's Maine, it's fucking Georgia, the, the Mexican that doesn't have the product accessible like how we do you know yeah, and yeah. Those people are the ones that are really like like they make the me starting the business so worth it because we're so fucking spoiled here south of the border that we don't appreciate it as much we see a huarache we see a blues artesanal or a charro something like that fuck it i could just go to fucking mexico in two hours but this person that lives in alaska and the oil, working in the fucking oil fields like he has no access to a fucking sombrero, some botines, something <clears throat> from his homeland. He has to, he has to wear boot barn and fucking western wear, like be dressed as an American cowboy when he doesn't. He wants to dress as a carro. Right. And and that and that customer, that customer has saved me and saved my business 
countless of times because every single time I want to throw in the towel because you know drama up and downs. So every business has a fucking roller coaster. Mm-hmm. I get that email, you know, hey, thank you for existing, thank you for this because of you. I'm like, fuck, is it that really that important? You know, mm-hmm. like, I'm like, is it is is what I do really that important? And then people affirm it when people actually that don't have access to a product tell me it's like, fuck, like, I'm so glad because if it wasn't for you, my daughter couldn't have that charro quinceanera. Mm-hmm. We couldn't dress mm-hmm. as I'm like, fuck. So that, that, that makes it fucking worth it, you know? No, dude, I think you hit, I'm sorry, I think you hit the nail right on the head. The fact that we're so spoiled because we are, you're absolutely right. I mean, we can, Nogales is right down, it's two hours away, two and a half hours for us. Uh, we have, um, it's the algodones. I mean, we can head over there real quick and it's easy for us. And then, you know, for obviously, obviously a lot of the Mexicans, a lot of Mexicans have migrated to, you know, these other, these other parts of the country and they don't even have something as simple as a good Mexican restaurant. I mean, they've got like the American, <laughs> you know, even when we travel, we travel for Mexico when they play, we, I mean, we went to Miami, bro. So we went to Miami for a Mexico game. And everything out there is Cuban, Puerto Rican, Venezolano, todo el pedo. And, dude, we couldn't find a fucking taco shop. We couldn't find – I mean, we had to drive. I don't know how far to actually find, like, tacos. You know what I mean? So I know you hit the nail right on the head, right on the head. And and we're so spoiled in Arizona, uh, California, Texas. We don't realize how well we have it. We're so close to our culture, right Right there on the border. Yeah. We're all over the place, bro. It's true. A couple of things that when you said – um. We know a bunch of us go to different states to see me, like Rich said, to see, like, we go to Chicago, Miami, New York. And like you said, it's hard to find things that we want specifically, right? Like, damn, what are you tacos tonight, right? And now it's kind of spreading out. But like you said, like e-commerce, now we can get whatever, I mean, pretty much whatever we want online, which is a good thing, right? And it's hard for people, like even Veronica in Arkansas, um, to get like like raza, but there's raza everywhere. Me- like Mexicans were everywhere, but you know we just gotta find a thing online. And and like what you said about la cultura, you know, bringing that into your son because Pancho Villa's army can relate to that because that's kind of what we like to do with everything. We like to bring our football cultura and everything. I mean, a lot of us like to drink and have fun, but we appreciate what this country has given to us. But we also want to bring, like, our cultura from Mexico and not forget where we came from because our parents, our grandparents, did what they had to do in order for us to be successful. Yeah. Um, we have I, memories. I really quick. Do we have members that are in, like, South Carolina that have a freaking southern accent, bro? Yeah. <laughs> like, we hear them, and even Coronel just wants to talk to them every weekend and be like, hey, hey, I just want to hear your voice, dude. It's so sexy, dude. Like, talk to me in southern <laughs> In, in Spanish way, no mom is dude like a Spanish Mexicano dude. This guy like has a twang. He he's drinking like what was it what was it moonshine? Moonshine. When we entered? Moonshine. moonshine. Yeah. But here's the kicker, freaking Francisco. This guy, you right away, dude. He's got all this. He's still Mexicano, and he fucking drives a freaking Prius, bro. Like what the <laughs> hell, man? <laughs> no mom is way, dude. Like this guy is like all over. I love. We love him, dude. Hey, Chico. Uh, you know, shout out. But that's all. That's what we are, and I think I felt that way because in, in the story, uh, my grandpa super rancho. My my dad, like he grew up there. He he immigrated here. Uh, once he found out my mom was pregnant, <laughs> uh, came over here uh, to to give us a better opportunity, and that's all it is, right? Just to give us an opportunity, not to fucking give us success or to entitle us to success, but just an opportunity, and then. Um, then I grew up, my dad tried to instill the culture because, you know, I'm his firstborn. Like, oh, he got all excited. He bought the horses. He bought all of this. But then he realized right away that L.A. fucking rent is not cheap, you know? So eventually he started like, fuck, all this that I'm working, like, I'm going to have to work even more. And six, seven days a week, he had to let go of the horse. He had to let go of the fucking the, 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 the wardrobe. But the first five years of my life was all on top of a horse, going to the charreadas. So that got stuck in that semillita. That semillita got stuck in there. And then 
I grew up an LA kid, you know, I fucking, I love Tupac. I, I, I love metal. I love, like, I love all kinds of music. I, I've gone through my phases, but until I had a child was when I'm like, what the hell am I going to pass on to him? Like, what am I literally going to pass on to him? That's when it really, como se dice, se, like, me cayó el 20. Se me, <laughs> <clears throat> like, I fucking realized, I was like, literally, I could just continue living life the way that I have. And my son is not going to speak Spanish. My son is going to be ashamed that fucking he doesn't want to wear a sombrero. And next thing you know, he's going to be like that third, fourth generation that doesn't want to speak Spanish and con el nopal en la frente. So literally, I did that. <laughs> started my company from fear. I started from fear that my son was not going to be uh, proud. Uh, mm -hmm. to Mexican American. So, so that's what I did, man. So that's how the company kind of started. And I'm glad that I'm not the only one out there that thinks the same because five, six years ago, I thought I was kind of like alone and then social media literally just really helped us grow to where we are right now. It's funny you say that dude, because right, Coronel, that's kind of like a bunch of Villas army started as well. Right? Like we have yeah. this generation of you know, Mexicanos who either, you know, born like for me, I was born in Mexico, but I came when I was four. So I was raised in the U.S. Coronel, born here in the, in, the, in the state. Same thing with Ivan. Right. And a lot of our members. Right. Kind of that in that area. And we felt like we were kind of alone. Right. Is there anything that we can connect with? You know, we're not, you know, you know, that whole saying, that yeah. Right. Like, where am I? Like, what's my identity? And, and like yourself, you know, you really found that connection with Charreria. And I, I, I connect with you on that, too, because that's where my, you know, a lot of my family is from. But also is a Selección Mexicana, right? Like we have that, 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 that pride that we have. And I think it just gets to that notion, like, dude, what do we what do we connect with? And it, for, for us, it was natural, dude. I mean, people always get shit about, like, why don't we go after the U.S. team? Why aren't you cheering for the U.S.? Dude, we don't have that connection with them, man. This is our culture, dude. This is, you know, who, what, what, who represents us as, as who we are as individuals. You know, we connect. We, they look like us, right? They ha they have names like us, um, those type of things. I mean, Coronel, I mean, your thoughts about that? But I found I think that's very similar, right? Yeah. No, absolutely, no, absolutely, man. Just but the one thing I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of us out there, right? And just like just like you mentioned, Paco, there's a lot of us out there, and sometimes you're kind of like as you're young, you're you it might be the minority at school, and you kind of like uh, you know you don't want to you don't want to show show off your culture, right? But the one thing the one thing that amazes me about your story, Paco. Is the fact that do you mind how old are you? I'm 34. You're 34. That's young, bro. Oh, that, that's baby. young. You're, yeah, you're young. He, he, won, he won the prize, man. He won the prize. He's the youngest. He won the prize. No, but the fact the fact that <laughs> you being so young, right? You realize and you 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 got your ducks in a row. You mentioned obviously once you found out you were going to be a father, you decided to like, hey, let me straighten out. A lot of people don't do that, bro. A lot of people take a long ass time to finally. Como dices, que le cae, que se le prende el foco, right? It's like, mm -hmm. and to me, I think that's that's one of the most amazing things because I listen to your podcast uh, and you you speak a lot of what I'm thinking. I think you and I connect because, you know, I'm like, you, you're, I mean, I was listening to the the, the podcast with the, uh, where the older gentleman was mowing the lawn, right? And his 15-year-old son was sitting in the, uh, in the van, <laughs> you know, on, the, on his phone. And you're like, you're like, come on, like, what the fuck? Like, help your help your dad out. And I see that. We see it all the time, bro. We see it all the time. And and it does tick you off. But the fact that you were so young and you were like, I am going to do something to better my family, I think that's amazing, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you. And, and I think, I don't know, man. I don't know what you guys think. I, I, I feel like uh, the internet, social media might have had a lot to do with it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Reality shows. All that bullshit. You know what? And, yeah. and, and even, 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 um, I just got a new phone. My old phone was broke and I finally got a new one. But listen to your podcast. You, you inspired me to kind of take a step back and rethink, reevaluate my life and, yeah. and what I do. And I've even, I've already deleted, um, Facebook and Facebook Messenger. So Ivan and, and Z, if you're trying to reach me on Facebook, Facebook Messenger, sorry, bro. It's, it's, I was wondering what off, happened. Off, right? I, was kind of, I was sending you a bunch yeah. of, <clears throat> it's know, a lot like of that, right? videos. What like happened? This, dude, it's ignoring yeah, me. it's a lost cause, right? And so I'm actually thinking about, you know what? I'm gonna de I think I'm gonna delete Instagram. I'm gonna delete probably Twitter, right? And stay off of that because again, 
The, what's the, you, you, you hit the nail right on the head, Paco. The first thing I do in the morning, I wake up, I look at my Instagram, I look at my Twitter, I look at uh, my messages, and then it's just every day it's a routine. And right before I go to bed, I do the same thing, bro. And it controls you, right? And, and after listening to your podcast, I'm like thinking, dang, you know what? You're right, dude. You're right. And I'm almost 50, yeah. right? I'm almost 50. And, and listening, you know, to you being so young, you know, my, I respect you a lot. I mean, just from the short amount of time that I listen to your podcast and your story, um, it's just mm-hmm. amazing. Bro. That's but, crazy. Yeah, but it really yeah. squashed that notion of you can't teach a dog, oh, uh, teach a dog new tricks. Dude, there it is right there. I think that's a lie. That's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, I think that social media thing, I agree with you guys where I think it can impact you in a negative way, but there's always two sides, you know, there, I think social media, you can use it to advantage too. Like well, you can use it to, to pick up like right here, Carnitas del Momo, like everybody right here, it's a bomb Carnitas bomb in Boyle Heights where if you're in Boyle Heights, they're like, oh, you know, Carnitas del Momo, right? But w- because of social media, he blew up and they have like over 50,000 followers or what have you. I don't know how many, but, but it's, there's always people there now. And like, for instance, that guy dog face who yeah. did that ocean spray thing where he was living off a trailer. Right. And cause of that TikTok thing, he got a new car, a new vehicle actually donated by ocean spray. Um, he got his house now. He's not living in a trailer anymore. And he's been traveling to a lot of places because people want to get like whatever he does on his, to social media if well, you let it control you, you know? but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna uh, before i know Paco, i, I, I don't want to cut you off Paco, but in, <clears throat> in essence i mean yeah it's great i mean he gets a house he gets a car and stuff but what's he gonna do with that i mean you know what, what he I mean? does, what, what he does he said, with those things that well, he's, gonna make you know, a difference right it's kind of like a lot of us want to work because we want to pay our house off and we want at least a vehicle to get around some people you know but for him, like he said, he has a house, he has a car, and he just has to work and do whatever he wants. You know, there's there's good and bad. No, but everything. that's, that's just like they say, like to alcohol, you know, drink in moderation. I think it's the same for social media. Like, I don't necessarily think, I personally don't necessarily think you have to delete your social media accounts. I understand, so because I know a lot of people have done it, but if you don't let it control you, there's advantages to having like social media and stuff yeah, like that. I think um, the catch here is. If you and I think social media kind of goes par with technology. If yeah. you if you use if you use social media and technology, that can be a good thing. But if yeah. you, but it becomes a bad thing when you let social media and technology use you. Exactly. Right. So now so now we get into the part where now we get into the part where Facebook and Instagram and TikTok they pay millions and millions of dollars to these scientists and engineers that know psychology and they know the human brain and how to keep us addicted to, to yeah. Yep, so, so next thing you know, when you're like scrolling through oh, Facebook man. or TikTok and you're like, oh shit, my, an hour passed by, a, a two hours passed by, that wasn't an accident. That was an algorithm. That was fucking people that were trying to manipulate us. Now, yeah. That's a bad thing because we're just consuming. We're consuming, consuming, consuming. And look at what people do when they consume a lot of hamburgers. Look at the obesity rate. Look at the debt in this country. We're just consuming cars, consuming debt. Now, if we could turn from consumers to producers, you know, now we could produce content on social media. Now we could produce a business. Now we could produce positive things through technology, social media, through a website, through whatever. I think the mindset here is to 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 catch yourself, to be aware. Mm-hmm. Of, oh shit, am I am I using my phone or is my phone using me? Okay. And and there's a lot of people that was you know like if you put a taco in front of them, fucking they're gonna eat it. So might as well not even go to the taqueria because you're going to eat it. So on the phone thing, that's the kind of the philosophy behind it. If you could control yourself, if you have the discipline to not be yeah going to TikTok all the time or to Facebook, then fuck it, keep it. But if you know yourself, if you're aware that you're an addict and fuck, if I open this app, I'm going to stay here for an hour and not fucking <laughs> do what I have to. Uh, then at that point, you know yourself, fucking delete that shit, you know, get that, get that uh, digital cleanse, you know, because that's yeah. 
30. It's like going cold turkey. It's like, you know, it's like an addict. You said, right? You got to separate yourself from the from the freaking source, right? And, <laughs> yeah. Dude, no mom. Is, that's a real talk right there, man. I love that shit. And you said a lot of things. A lot of things were going through my mind. And I love what you said about, like, dude, dude you know, the, the, Mexi the Mexicano culture. Just talk about the Latino culture, right? We're consumers, dude. They, they know the power of our consumption, right? But I think what scares what scares others is that, dude, if once we take that and start moving it into more producers, damn, dude, like this is it's game changer for us, right? Like yourself, you know, Paco and, and, and us, like if we start to finally say, hey, you know what? Yeah, it's great. We have a power of consumption, but we have more than just that power. Do we have the power of freaking making change, of being part of the change, of being part of the community and making yeah. it better instead of being the victim? We're not the ones making the making the decisions, making the dude. That's that's that, that's what we need to get to, bro. I would love, that's my future, bro. I want just ask, a matter of time. I want to ask you guys something because you guys might be more knowledgeable on this. But I remember when Mexico wasn't gonna make the World Cup. I, I think it was when USA uh, kind of got him in. Remember about <laughs> yeah. We won't, we won't we won't call that. Just say you know what it was just you know we stopped yeah. making yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're saying that if Mexico didn't make the World Cup, Adidas and all the sponsors were going to lose a shitload of money. And then yes. my, why? And then I started kind of researching a little bit into it. And they're saying because when Mexico reaches a World Cup, one of the jerseys most sold are the Mexico jerseys. And then in my mind, that, that stuck to me till now. I'm like, why? Because we just fucking consume. Like, we, we love, like, we whatever we have our value like we have our value we spend money on it and, and it's sad because sometimes the value that we're grown by i guess music or influencers nowadays or celebrities it's like that like you gotta wear the gucci you gotta have the fucking trocona and 24 inch rims i'm like dude like seriously like that's 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 how much of a consumer we are but if we become a producer i'm like fuck it i'm gonna own real estate i'm gonna own businesses I'm going to create content like how you guys are doing, you know, like then at that point, that's where the change can can start. Because I think uh, we have a consumer kind of mentality that we have to get away from. And I think all the, the big companies are fucking taking advantage of us. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. I think that we, we, we've got we've got a lot of self-reflecting to do as a culture. You know what I mean? I think person. I think a lot of. Everything that's going on nowadays can totally consume us. Like, you know, you, you, you said to yourself, La Trocona, the purses, especially in L.A., bro. I don't see it a lot out here in Phoenix, but in L.A., it's LA. like, I got to have the purse. I got to have the truck. I got I got to <laughs> have it better than that guy. And, and it's kind of like, but like, like you said, you know, at, at what cost? I mean, you're getting it, but then you're constantly in debt or you're constantly Put yeah. it, you know, you might look good, but you got nothing in the bank account. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and true. We have to do self-reflection. So, so it really takes that notion instead of keeping up with the Joneses, it should be keeping up with the Sanchez's, right? Because we do the same <laughs> shit for our culture, dude. Like, oh, oh, did you see what they have? Fuck, they got but, that. But, but it's only it's only here though. It's only in the Americanized culture, or maybe it's in La Ciudad allá como in Mexico. No, I don't think it is, bro. I don't. Uh, I don't think it's like I need to do. I, I, I maybe. Maybe I want to do better for myself, but not like I got to get my cars better than his. I got to get my, yeah. you know, what do you think about that? It, it, it's true what, what Paco said, because a lot of us right here in L.A., like he said, rent is really expensive. And instead of being like, you know what, I'm going to clamp down, I'm going to save my money and I'm going to buy a house. A lot of people be like, nah, you know what, I'm going to live with my, I'm going to live with my tío. I'm going to just pay like $500 rent, but I'm going to get myself a car. Everybody wants a nice, wants a nice car, but nobody wants to buy a house, and yeah. that's that it's goes to man. a lot of a lot of people. Like we have like ten <laughs> people living in a house, but everybody wants a nice truck. But little do we know that if you buy a house and you buy another house, then you can get a better. That's how it is. That's how I know a lot of people. I have an old car. I haven't bought a car in like fifteen years, but you know everybody makes choices, and yeah, I like I like the way he thinks. Paco, you think? I like the way he thinks. Hey, Paco. So, like, you you've also wrote wrote a book, right? I mean, that's just that's amazing to me, bro. I mean, like, yeah. yeah. So, so when it came, so so <laughs> I guess I guess like you, a lot of people. When was it? About two three years ago, when it started taking off, people are like, oh, uh, 
what do you entitle your overnight success, you know? And like, man, you came out of nowhere and all those kind of like things that uh, for many people, they'll take pride in. But for me, I took offense. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about me being an overnight success? Like I've been reading books. I've been going to seminars. I've been trying to be mentored. I've been doing a shitload of mistakes. I had way more mistakes than successes, but I've been doing this shit for 15 years. Charro Seca was just the tip of the iceberg. So, so what I ended up wanting to do is like I started my podcast and that shit took off. And then apart from that, like you guys have your podcast, people start engaging with you guys, you know, like, like we want to hear this, we want to hear that. And people were asking me, what's the number one thing you could, from all the books you read, from all the self-improvement, like, what is it? Like, who's the enemy here? Is it Trump? Is it politics? Like, what is it? And then I came down to the number one enemy is your ego. It's you. Like, if you want to see the, if you want to see the the reason for your success or the reason for your failures, all you have to do is look in the fucking mirror. Like, look in the mirror. You don't have to blame fucking Democrats, Republicans, politicians. Like, you, if you're you're in a land of opportunity, I get the oppression, but you have the opportunity where other people in other countries, like your mom and your dad or your grandpa, they sacrificed their country to come here for you and all you're doing is fucking puro party like all you're doing is fucking focusing on the wrong shit when your mom is looking at you and be like is this the reason why i fucking crossed the fucking rio grande like is that really the reason why i fucking sacrificed my life for you to fucking be a this madroso or puro fucking like a fuck boy or fucking like it, that's not what it is mm-hmm. so so yeah so i so i wrote a book and it's kind of like the first thing that I remember my tios telling me, it's like, ponte las pilas, agarra el rollo y ponte las pilas. So the name of the book is Agarra el rollo y ponte las pilas. And I think a lot of our community have to, we have to do that shit, you know? Yeah. We have to okay. get low and fucking put on the batteries because um, if, if you remember, I don't know if it's with you guys, if you guys can relate, but my pops and my mom, by the age of 34, they were already a grown adult. They had kids. They fucking had a mortgage. They had. They were. They were. They were like a. Like I looked up to them, but then I look at my like people that are 30, 20, like thirty four, and they're still little babies. They're little kids. They're like still playing PlayStation. Fucking. They're all waiting in line to get a PS five, instead of fucking like like putting like money aside for savings account or feeding their family. So I think I think our parents were more mature than us at our age. I don't know if you guys could see that. Absolutely. No. And I think the times have obviously changed, right? Because <laughs> when they were younger, they didn't have so many distractions like we do. Yeah. You got Facebook, you got Instagram, you named it all. You name it. We got movies, we got air, cable TV. We got so many distractions oh, distracting. distracting us. And again, I'm not, you know, going to sit here and tell you that I've never gotten distracted. I'm absolutely distracted. Right. But you know, like I said, and, and have you ever thought about doing any kind of motivational seminars, Paco? I mean, because to be honest with you, today we went to the mall, right? We were Christmas shopping and whatnot. And for the first time... Wait, what's a, very, a mall? Oh, I don't know what a mall is. Can you just grab it? Chandler. Chandler. <laughs> Chandler. Yeah. But you know, they, they uh, in, in LA, they got locked down, bro. So I don't know if that's going on out there, but out here it's not really locked down. But for the first time in a long time, I walked into a bookstore. And was actually looking to buy. And I don't read, bro. Anybody that knows me, I don't read. I'll read a comic book, but I won't sit and read. But I'm starting to really open my mind, opening my mind. I'm starting to open my mind and and really thinking about, you know what? I'm going to pick up this book. I'm going to pick up this book. And I'm, pick, and I'm really, really going to focus and hunker down because I'm telling you, Paco, listen to your podcast. You motivated me to do that, bro. Yeah, dude. That's you awesome. Know. And, uh, and you got to think about it like my, my abuelito didn't know how to read. You know, my, my pops didn't know how to read. And what's the whole point of us knowing how to read? What's the difference between us and a, and a person that lives in Africa and Mexico and, and a third world country that doesn't know how to read? The sad part is that we choose not to read because fucking entertainment, you know, because Netflix is fucking smart and they fucking say they just keep feeding you. They, you don't have to push the play button anymore. Fucking after one episode finishes, they have to <laughs> YouTube does the same and they're no stand pendejos. Like they, they want to keep us distracted. And that's the word distraction because our ego, our ego wants distraction. Like they don't want responsibility. 
uh, in my book, I call it a chiquillo malcriado, you know? And we all know one. We all seen a little kid that fucking their parents can't handle them. <clears throat> that fucking throws a tantrum. And I think deep down, we all have that one in our mind. Like, like that chiquillo malcriado that stomps around when you fucking tell him to get to work. When you fucking stomp around because you got to go to the gym and work out. Like, because no le quieres dar lo que le quieres dar. Like, and I think we all have that one. And the chiquillo malcriado, what do you do right now? We give him a tablet. Fucking, here's a phone. Shut yeah. up. Yeah, don't button. bother me. Don't bother me. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to discipline you. I don't want to take the time to 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 do this because I'm also distracted. Because I want to do my shit right. Like I want to look at my social media stuff. I want to see how many likes I have. It, it's sad, Paco, dude. It's, it's it's that shift, dude. And I think we need to have more of this real talk with people. Be, be like, you know, just take that check you know, marcado and start giving them a freaking nalgada and get that freaking chancla right and and wake them up a little bit, dude. Because it's getting crazy out there, man. So I got the book. So, dude, I just want to give you a quick props to you. I say, hey, dude, it, it's a, it, it, for Coronel, it's not a big read, dude. You can get this done in one day, bro. It's not that bad. I, but I love about it is that, again, he just gets right to the point. Because what I hate about books is that they give you this whole, like, backstory. And, and they don't get to the point till later. Like, it, it's like you get bored in the beginning. This is what my problem with books. It, you have to hook me. You have to hook me, man. You gotta tell me what is it? What is what is how? What am I gonna do to invest in the next whatever you know hours, days? You gotta hook me. A lot of them don't do that shit, dude. They're just so philosophical, so like textbooks, you know. And and what Paco did, he was right to the point, dude. He's really just in your face saying, "Hey, you're a worse enemy, dude. You're you're constantly in battle in this war." And, and he, right away, I was like, "Oh hell yeah, I am, dude. I gotta be, I gotta stop that, dude." And and, and I gotta give you props, dude. And you went right to the point. And, and, it, and it, it talks a lot about that, man. And But I want to transition to this real quick. You talk, we're approaching the New Year's. You know, in a few weeks, we're going to start 2021. And you made a good point. I always believe in this. New Year's resolutions are just, it's just a, it's a distraction, dude. It's just a way for people. And I think it's going back to social media. People are going to post that shit on social media. I'm going to start working out. Gym memberships go up. That's where they make yeah. their bucks. And you know they're waiting for that, dude. They're like salivating, going, damn, dude, we're about to get the big wave of freaking enrollments. But it's all, it's 24-7 every day, dude. You have to look at self-improvement, man. So, I mean, Paco, tell, tell us about your philosophy. How did you finally get away from that mold? Because this is where a lot of people just fall in that trap. New Year's resolution, 2021. This is going to be a new slate. How did you get away from that? Man, I, I, I for me... It started, and I'm going to tell you honestly, because I, I read a lot and kind of funny, you could learn shit from books, right? Uh, fucking, I wish a teacher could have told me that shit in high school. <laughs> but but I, I, I read it in the book and, 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 and studying other people that were successful, they say that the road to a million dollars starts with a penny, you know? <clears throat> I started with nothing. You started with a penny. I'm like, no, I didn't start with a pe- I didn't start with nothing. I started with one penny. One penny is one penny, you know? And the penny for me was always like, every day of your life is one penny. So if you had a fucking, if you could, if you could always every single day make a 1% improvement of your life, that's one penny improvement. But everybody wants that big old quantum leap of like, they want to become rich in 30 days or they want to six pack the gym for fucking two weeks or they want to see the results like so fucking fast. But my mentality was always, it starts with the fucking penny. It starts with one me- one little win a day, you know? If you never ran, fucking just put on your shoes, go outside, <laughs> and then come back in. That's already a win. That's a penny win. And so for me, the, the reason why is because I think New Year's resolutions goes into that mentality that people want change, like, right now. And uh, they make an excuse that they could still be lagging it till then. So right now, they still have two to three weeks. Every single person that's going to start a diet, they're going to start it in two to three weeks, right? And <laughs> who's going to save money for, is going to do it in two to three weeks. And I think that's the wrong mentality because those are the people that want like a microwave life. You know, we put fucking cup of noodles in the fucking sopa huevona and in three minutes it's done. But they don't know that to fucking really cook a good fucking pozole or good fucking caldo, it's it, it's it's a slow cook, and that's life and that's results and that's and, and the people that are like with the microwave life are the people that that don't have the results that they want, and eventually 
the sucky part about that is that imagine if you would save a penny when you were 21, by the age that you were 30, by the age that you were 40, that fucking penny would have compounded. It would have multiplied times two. And by the time that you're 30, 35, 40, 55, like that penny would have already doubled, quadrupled, fucking already, it would have multiplied. But everybody just lags it and they're like, ah, oh, I'll take the fucking pill. I'll take the, I'll do the surgery. I'll do the yeah, no, I, I think I think of that. I think of that vest, dude. I, dude, I fell for that trap. I'm gonna I'm gonna confess. This is a real confession with Z, dude. Remember that freaking vest that you would put on that would shock your shock you to get that <laughs> back? I fucking bought that shit, dude. And they, I started burning. I was like, "Chinga suma, this is not gonna work, dude." That was it was smoking. I was like, <laughs> "No <laughs> way, dude." Hey, oh. no, it's true though. Hey, Paco, you know how you mentioned that um, the microwave life. I talk to my students a lot about, cause they're like, oh, mister, I want to do what you do. Like, you know, the Coronel knows it. So it's like, we go to a bunch of sporting events, right? But it wasn't always like this. Like I didn't start when I was 21, I wasn't going to a bunch of sporting events, but it's like, I tell them, look, I put in the work, you know, we have, I have my three jobs. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's true. Everybody wants instant gratification. It's like, I know I'm not, I'm not putting the girls down. So I know a bunch of them, like they said it. They don't want to work. They get the surgery done and they get the, you know, they're only fans and then boom, like they're balling or they make their money. Right. But that's not their fault. That's, that's okay. It's the people who subscribe to that. It's instant gratification. Like I know a bunch of students, a bunch of my students that have graduated like from other high schools. Right. When I used to work at Palisades high school and they're like, Oh, I don't want to work. Like a couple of my students, like I've helped them get a job and they're like, Oh, it only pays 15 bucks an hour. Right, well, what do you want? Like, oh, I want to make like 25. Well, fool, you got to like go to school or something. Like everybody wants a job where they get paid like a lot of money and they don't want to put in the work. They don't want to work weekends. Like, oh, I want to work like certain times. Nah, it doesn't work like that. Like nobody, I know a lot of people and I don't care if they get upset. It's true. Nobody wants to put in the work. They want instant gratification in whatever it is they do. No, it's I think, true. I think it's the true. freaking lines, bro, dude. Look at like, you know, the fast pass, right? Like I'll pay extra just to, I don't want to wait in line <laughs> like this ride. This is ridiculous. Two hours, I'll pay $20, $50, dollars more to get in front of the line. And you feel like you're the shit, right? Like we don't like waiting in line, dude. Look at Black Friday, dude. Like I'll wait. Like I don't care. Like it's, it's people get impatient. Um, you know, they'll do whatever they can to get ahead and they don't want to work hard for it. Like if I can find a cheat code, I think do a cheat code, right? Give me a cheat code. Screw this. I don't want to, you know, figure out a way to get there. It's always trying to get that advantage, dude, and not work for it, man. Hey, yeah. Paco, let me, let Paco, let me ask you a question. So, um, I know that, you know, a lot of, the, uh, we are our own enemy, like you, the ego, right? Your parents, uh, I know cause for example, my, my, my dad, is from Mexico. He's old school Mexican. He, my dad's not like, ven mijo, voy a hablar contigo, te voy a dar este consejo. My dad was old school, hardcore, just mean, right? He was just always like, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do that, right? My mom was the kind one. Um, and your parents seem to be instilling you that, you know, and I think that that kind of, it trickles down, right? So you're instilling that in your son. And for, for the generation now, how much how how much are the parents at fault? I guess my question. Hmm. Do you think? I my and my story is the opposite. My mom was the hard one, and my dad was more the gentle one. My dad was the one that the aquí te doy un abrazo. And when I saw my mom, I, the first thing I saw is if she was holding something in her hand. Like I hope. Is she about to give me a chingazo, right? I, <laughs> On cloud or something, because I the first thing I'm looking at is her hand, her hand. But, but I don't think I don't think uh, my personal opinion, how I see it, is my mom and my dad did what they had to for me to be born in this country where we have the opportunity, and I just mean the opportunity. Um, after that fact, I don't think my mom owed me anything. I don't think my dad owed me anything. I was raised practically by myself just because every school class was in English and they couldn't translate. They couldn't help me with my math homework. They couldn't help me with uh, go to college or go to like my mom and my dad were lost. Like my dad was working just to pay the rent. <laughs> 
and to put us like to put fucking food in the table. Uh, yeah. I think I think the big part that my parents did very very well though is that even though my mom me daba fajazo, she did it with love. Mm -hmm. She disciplined me with love. <clears throat> It, did it with love like he worked really hard and showed me that that, that uh, no matter what i was loved and no matter what that actually made me not going to because i grew up in south southeast la like like who is it that lives in boyle heights you know that every fucking corner was fucking cholos like 213 gang the fuck whatever like we all grew up around that the only reason that i didn't go into that kind of people was because I felt the love in my household. Mm. Like I felt that I didn't need to go find love with like that kind of a family. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, a lot of, uh, I, I think that's all a parent could do. I, I, I see the tiger moms nowadays, like fucking are pressuring their kids, but they're, they're putting too much pressure on them and they're not allowing them to grow. They're not nurturing their child because every child is different, you know? But I think my mom and my, my dad did what they could, and they gave me love. Fucking, they put tortillas. I used to grab the tortilla, put sal and tapatio, and roll it and eat it. I was fucking happy with that. But now a kid, if he doesn't have chicken nuggets or fucking Twinkies or Doritos, like fucking throws a fucking tantrum. Yeah. And we're trying to get I want the Takis, right? Give me the Takis. Like, yeah, I, I think they're trying to do too much. I think the fault here is that they're trying to give too much and then the kid is growing up with an entitled mentality that I deserve this. And I told my pops and he cried a, a long time ago. I told him, look at the greatest gift you gave me was being poor. The best present that you have ever given me is being poor. Like knowing that all we had was tortilla frijoles. We had a big old, I don't know if you guys ever had that, but a big old cajon and frijoles was never missing in the house. Like, yeah. Sometimes they didn't have Kool-Aid, we didn't have soda, but we always had a big old cajon de frijoles where I used to stick my hands in there. <laughs> like, did, did, did you have to like take the rocks out too? Like here, you gotta take uh, all the freaking... <laughs> uh, to take out the piedra? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, like, look at those beautiful memories of like, of, of a trial, tribulation of, I think uh, there's a podcast and it might sound mean, it might sound very mean, but I told, and in my podcast I said, um, I wish, and and I wish for all my close family members and my friends, I wish them pain and suffering. I wish them pain and suffering because that's not the end of the world. But at the other end of pain and suffering, you're going to discover yourself. And I think a lot of these kids are not going through any pain. <laughs> or mm -hmm. so. If the fucking Wi-Fi is slow, they think that's fucking pain. It's the world, dude. Yeah. Yeah. They, they throw a tantrum for the stupidest little things. And I think we, we, we had to go through no internet and then we had to go through dial up <laughs> and now we go yeah. through fucking bad, fast as Wi-Fi. but we have a good mindset that we know that life is not always instantaneous. We knew back in the day that it wasn't like that. So, so that same mentality, I put it in my business. If I, I put it like, it's not the short game, it's the long game. And I wish El Tri could think about it like that too, you know? Or fucking Cruz Azul, like oh, a party, like oh, let's think along, <laughs> like let's do some positive mindset. Oh, yeah. Dude, you struck a hey, nerve, you know dude, Paco. Yeah. That's exactly what I was gonna talk about yeah. next, dude. It's like freaking yeah. Cruz Azul, bro. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened, dude? So let, let's talk about that. Let's unpack that a little bit because dude, it's, it, and it's funny. We, we we like to tease, you know, as our culture, dude. Like we're the best. Free. We talk trash, right? We like to to feed off of, of other people's misery. But, <laughs> but the reality, dude, it's like, it's it, going back to a fact, it's all mindset, dude. Like they're, they're, they believe that they're cursed. They believe they have this. And let me just pull it up real quick. Cause we know this term and they even, they even like actually made it an actual word. Like the Mexican Webster dictionary. <laughs> no mames. Like they've really made that like an actual term. Let me, uh, actually, let me back, uh, back. This is where Coronet gives me a bunch of shit. He's like, he's not a producer. He's, <laughs> he's always definitely not stuff. a producer. Hold on. Let me get back a little bit. Let me stop sharing. I'm actually going ahead of myself. Hold hey, on. Pa yeah. Paco, you need to write a book on how to become a producer so he can fucking read that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take two. Take two, man. Give me Let's a shit. Hey, you're, 
So always getting off our misery, man. Stop it. All right. Kusila. So the uh La Academia Mexicana de, de Lengua, this is basically like the Webster, right? Of Mexico. They actually created yeah. this dude and said, hey, this is actually an actual word now. Es un uh, neologismo del español de México que uh, alude a la a acción de perder un partido luego de tener la victoria prácticamente <laughs> asegurada. <laughs> what uh, the uh, hell, dude? Like, they actually made this a term, bro. And I saw this on Twitter, too, where they actually kind of, like, break it down, um, saying ganar continuamente para perder todo por un error. Wow. Ned, you think that, 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 that sums up that right there? Oh, 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 cuatro errores, güey. No mames. <laughs> Perder torpresa sorprendentemente. Esperar cerca, muy cerca, en un, un título sin Ooh. conseguirlo. Dude, like, like, this is ridiculous. Hey, but, hey, but you know what? Like, mm -hmm. honestly, uh, I hate this. Because you know the Dodgers lost the World Series, like, in, like, the playoffs and the World Series so many years. Yeah. But, that that goes to show you how much football influences, um, like our Mexican culture, right? Because like in the NFL, Buffalo Bills lost four Super Bowls in a row, and nobody kind of says that. As a matter of fact, they hadn't won a, like a Monday Night Football game until they beat my Niners last week. I think the last time they won was like 1999. Mm -hmm. But that that goes to show how much football influences like our culture right everybody says but they never say something about the Dodgers they never say something about the Bills but if you start talking football la vas a cruzar cruz a su largo y no mames firm, dude. <laughs> and we just and we just and we just learned I, we didn't know this Paco's a Cruz Azul fan or was a Cruz Azul when you were younger <laughs> you still pulling for them Paco or what's up with that the last fond memory I, w I had of Cruz Azul was Carlos Hermosillo fucking shooting a penalty. Uh -huh. That was the last time that I had a fond memory. And then after that, you know, I had to get away from La Chusma or else I'm going to have a mentality. No te creas. <laughs> by, by osmosis, dude, it starts to get on you. You're like, damn, I got Cruz Azul out of my life. So good, man. That's good. No, but, but actually, I, no, but... I literally stopped uh, following them as much when uh, Zacatecas had their own team in the Segunda. Oh, so I'm being okay. the fucking first for a long ass time, Los Mineros. But yeah, man, like all that, all that, um, it goes in, and he's right. Like the Dodgers, the Boston Red Sox, the Bills, all these people, you know, and they, and Cruz Azul, they have like this glass ceiling. <laughs> like that big, it, it, it wake me up like, like uh, there's a story of an of a baby elephant that they fucking actually put a stake on the ground and he's tied up, and because he's a baby he can't move you know there's a stake in the ground so he's kind of chained up to it, but that little elephant keeps growing and growing and growing to becomes a fucking multi-ton fucking animal and all they do is put a fucking stake in the ground, not knowing that the fucking elephant could just fucking pull it with the little yeah and, and he's free, so but. I think what happens with them is that no matter, I think their motivation has always been, yes, I'm going to win, I'm going to win, I'm going to win. And then when they're three free from gold, <laughs> a little ounce of doubt comes in. I'm like, fuck, ah, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to fuck this up, man. I'm going to mess it up. And that's kind of like, I guess that's the law of attraction. Like, you know, <laughs> at that point. Yeah. Like, but dude, it becomes, it becomes so part of their culture, right? Even the, the Cruz Azul fans. And, but you think about, like, for example, you know, the, like, the coach, he quit. He's just like, I'm done. Instead of just sitting around and taking, like, a man and be like, hey, you know what? I messed up. I'm going to learn from my mistake. Next time, we're going to go past that. We're going to learn, right? He just decided, I'm hey, out. Did he quit or he got boy. fired? Either way, he I, probably got fired, too. But sports is like that, too. they just like, it's going back to what Paco said, interest, satis uh, you know, immediate hey, satisfaction. You know if they don't win, we're, we're going to get a new coach. There's a couple of Cruz Azul fans that I do feel bad, like, Pepe, he's big with Pancho Villa's army. He's hardcore Cruz Azul. My homie Omar, what's up? He's a photographer, hardcore Cruz Azul. I feel bad for them. But there's a couple other Cruz Azul fans. Man, the fuck, they <laughs> fucking lose every fucking year. <laughs> fuck that. They know who they are. I went through that this year with the Dodgers. I went this year. Oh, I, remember, I remember when they hit, I was emotionally, it was so taxing on me for the last five years that this year I said, nah, fuck this. I'm not even going to invest myself emotionally. So, but now that they won, I'm like, fuck yeah, now you inspired me again. But that's, <laughs> sometimes, 
like Fontaine's success is in there where fucking no one believes in you and it doesn't matter what the Cruz Azul fans, the Dodger fans, that 11 people that are on the field, they have to believe it. And that's when they don't believe in it, then now we, like, it confirms. Hey, Paco, dude, it's true. This year, I was like, you know what? When the Dodgers finished the regular season and they had, like, the best record, I was like, ah, that's cool. I'll celebrate if we won the World Series. When, 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 you know, when they beat the Padres, I was like, if we win, we win. I wasn't, like, all pumped. When we were down 3-1 to Atlanta, I was like, you know, what do you expect? <laughs> and then when, when we lost that game, that crazy game in the World Series, I was like, you know what? If we lose, I'm not going to invest myself. <laughs> but like when we won, so much yeah, emotion. No, I, I said that. Even when the Niners lost the Super Bowl that year, I go, I'm not going to invest myself emotionally anymore that much into sports. But if we win, I'm going to let everybody know that we won. But if we lose, eh. you know what the difference between the difference between the Dodgers and the Cruz Azul is that they had a fucking closer, Julio Urias, pitching the last three fucking. Hey, what's up? Check out my shirt. Check out my shirt. Nice. Oh, nice. That, that guy. The World Series patch. That guy. That guy. Apart from his skills, apart from his talent, uh, look at look at he can't even see from uh, from one eye, but his fucking mindset. He yeah. came in there and said, "I'm gonna fucking win this game." I'm. If they if they would have put another pitcher, I was hoping that they didn't put Jackson. I was like, "Please don't." Oh hell no! Don't put hey, him. But, hey, you know what, Urias? I have him on my fantasy league team. True story. Uh, you guys can check his numbers. Urias was iffy throughout the season. I know it was a short season. You know when he started to pick it up when they traded Ross Stripling, because I think he's like, "Fuck!" If they traded him, and now imagine they traded me after that. I know because in my fantasy team, he started, like, pitching, like, pretty good. But in the playoffs, he was lights out as a reliever, man. So I, I think what you're saying, dude, it's all, you know, it all goes down to mindset, man. Like, dude, yeah, they, exactly. you know, get about that. I, and I think you know, some of these teams have overcome that, right? I'm thinking, like, the Cubs. The Cubs have had that forever, dude, and finally just overcame that. Now, you know, we got to, you know, they, they're on the track. Boston, the Boston Red Sox, dude, they had that curse, right? So it's possible. It's just the players have to believe it. And now the Cowboys are the ones that are dealing with that. So we're not going to talk about that, but you know what I'm saying? Mexico in the last World Cup, too. They made me believe, you know, when I saw the interview of Chicharito, like, eh, imaginarnos. The Chucky in the uh, Alemania. Then yeah. they went back. I, when I the, guy, the guy, the Mexican interviewer guy was trying to fucking, like, make him make the whole morale of the team. And Chicharito came out blazing and he says, yeah. Imaginarnos cosas chingonas, you know? I think if it was like, and then fucking they made us believe with fucking beating Germany. Hey, I true. think, I but something happened in that group that they had the talent, and but yeah. Hey, what? Was that hey, sweet? Start, start, start. Hey, Paco, what do you think? Do you think Mexico was that good this season? I mean, in the last World Cup, do you think they were that good, or Germany just had a really bad World Cup because Germany didn't even get out of the group? Do you think, what do you think? Do you think Mexico was that good or just Germany was that bad? And I think it doesn't matter because I think any game in sports, fucking, who is it? Like the fucking, the Washington no-name fucking football team could beat the, <laughs> they beat the Steelers. <laughs> I think it's just like, I think in life it's just, it's a matter of like, you've got to be positive, it, right? And I think, and I think Mexico was so prepared, so pumped up mentally that they caught Germany off guard when they were so maybe their ego caught them off guard that I'm cocky, I'm going to win, and blah, 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 where they they had the fire in them yeah. and they caught Germany off guard uh, and it was just downhill for them. There's but that I, ego again coming in, right? Buckle that ego, man. That ego just gets to us and it, and it gives us that false sense of security, false sense of like, you know, I overcame this, I can overcome anything and you don't, you stop, you get lazy, dude. You stop preparing Maybe that's what happened with Germany, dude. Where you know we're going up to make as Mexico. Maybe I don't have to prepare for you know as hard. I don't know. Watching the three and the whole World Cups and everything, I'm like, fuck, this is like our culture. Like this is our Mexican culture. If you look at the World Cup, Mexico is, you know, like they're so fucking badass when they're the underdog, but then when they're on top, like they let go of the gas. Like, like it's it's good. For, like, I don't know what it is. <clears throat> a lot of us too we 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 fight we're we're so hard working when we don't have it but then when we have a little ounce of success that's where 
that's where it's the scariest for our community and our culture. Yeah. We, we have something where maybe another Caucasian are like, man, you have nothing. But we think we have something. We have a trocona with 24 inch rims or we have the iPhone 12 and we think we're the shit. I'm like, bro, like, don't let go of the gas. Keep fucking going hard until you own property, until you own your business, until you fucking have financial freedom, you know? Keep reading, keep exercising, keep, keep developing because I think uh, the only way that our culture is going to change is it's a it's a dining room table at a time, you know. Every family has to keep progressing, yeah. and um, I think every family has to keep progressing. And as a whole, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna grow. But yeah. we're keep looking for the big. We keep looking for the hero, and I don't think the hero is gonna come out. I think the heroes and our fucking yeah, our heroes, our dads, our heroes are our moms, our heroes are our sisters, our brothers, our kids, and we have to look to ourselves that. Yeah. that the only way we're gonna grow. Simon, no, that's well said, man. I think it's, you know, Cruz Azul's problem is a great example of letting us know that first of all, <laughs> you know, anything, anything that can go wrong will go anything wrong. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. It's gonna go wrong. Yeah, but <laughs> you look, at, look at, you know, we're so focused on Cruz Azul, but we're not focusing on fucking Pumas, dude. Look yeah. at, look at their adversity, bro. Like, what, you know, that's the thing about going back to, you know, we were focused so much on the tragedy. But we're not focusing on the success, dude. This team was down 4-0. Everybody was already, you know, you know what? Even though this we have to, some, uh, you know what? They're not gonna do it. No, four, dude, they're down 4-0. How is that possible? They did it, bro. And that's what we need to look at as a positive shit. We always look at the negative. Always look hey, at the negative. Hey, that that's possible. This hey, might, hey. this might, this might take a little bit of salt out of the wound or whatever. But there are reports that the Cruz Azul uh, players threw the game. There's reports right. coming out saying that they actually lost on purpose. So I don't know. Right. But yeah, there's um, there's some tweets out there. Uh, you know, Paco, Paco will, will know what I'm talking about. They said, uh, they said that Cruz Azul, <laughs> really quick to, the, to talk about the they said when, when people always talk about, you know, they're telling stories or they do things because they said. I, the, I enjoy that part of that podcast. Who the fuck is they? <laughs> like, I. I don't know who they is. Like it's always <laughs> hey, like you talk to buddies, you talk to journalists, you're hearing on the news, right, fucking and anywhere, and they always, even right now with politics, right? They say the scientists, like who, which ones? I don't know which ones, but it's always a third party that's telling us what to do, and we don't even know who the fuck they are. <laughs> I, <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, dude, I really enjoy that me, part. You know, it scares me that when I see, dude, I was getting my haircut and my barber. You know, he brought up politics and I hate, you know, like, it's like, for me, it's like, you know what? It's over. Whoever won, won, whatever, <clears throat> you know, let's just move on. He, he asked me who I voted for and I told him and he, and he started going off this conspiracy theory. And I'm just like, where did you, where did you get that information? Oh, it's on the internet, bro. It's all over. And I'm like, it's true. I'm like, <laughs> it's like, I'm like, I'm like, it's like <laughs> and it was so far out there. It's like so many people that just get these random things. And I'm just like. Oh, okay. Hey. Well, I gotta believe it now. It's on the internet. It's for real. Hey, Z, it's true. You know how people are questioning, like the vaccine. If you want to take it, take it. If you don't, don't. Then people are saying, like, oh, they're gonna I track you. They're like, they're gonna track you with something. They might inject you with like something. <laughs> Man, they track you with your phone. Okay? Uh, yeah. A, a lot of us, a lot of us, we drink. We don't eat healthy. We don't exercise. And and you're worried that they're gonna inject you with something, but <laughs> but you don't want to take the vaccine. I'm like, come on, everything. Yeah, it's true. Put like, this crap in your like, body. Come on, man. Yeah, and they don't want to get a vaccine. Come on, man. You know what? That's it. If you get it, get it. If you don't, don't. Yeah. That's distraction, man. That's distraction. We go back to it. The ego loves distraction, and and. Uh, and that's the sucky part that that the ego accepts negative, but it's really hard to positive. Yeah. Like the Cruz Azul thing. Like our community accepts it so fast, like the negative side that Cruz Azul lost, but then we don't give props to Pumas. Like like it's so easy for us to accept the negative, yeah. and the positive. I'm like seriously, like man. That's what going man, back to what so you see somebody doing goals. success with somebody having <laughs> success, bro. With somebody having success. Instead of like saying, dude, that is amazing. That's a, it's great. We right away go to the name and be like, oh, you're a fucking drug dealer. You're, you know, you, you won the lottery. You didn't, you know, we always assume the negative. And it all goes down to our memes, bro. Look, dude, we just, we're the, we're the kings of memes, kings of trolling. Uh, that Those were coming all over the place, right? When it comes in, means 20 años de vida. He visto más fugas del Chapo Guzmán que campeonatos de Cruz Azul. 
<risa> Ay, mijito, te, de, uh, you know, te, de, te dejes que no le vayas al Cruz Azul. 1998, vamos a por la novena. 2020, vamos por la novena. Oh, you have, no, no. You have this freaking sprinter, dude, like beefing it, winning, winning the race, and then crop and go, yeah, yeah, la cruz, you know, cruz azulé, this becomes a term. And then you have this shit too, dude, Loteria. Dude, they got to bring our freaking try true board game into this. La jornada uno, ocho, dieciséis, going from el valiente to el borracho to la pinche muerca, la muerte, wey. No mames. <laughs> Dude, That's you know what's amazing? What's what's amazing to me is, dude, those people are so quick with their memes, bro. Something happens, and like as, as soon as something happens, right dude. away, bro, right away they're with those fucking memes, and they come out quick, bro. I'm like, dude, I think oh, they do they people just sit on their computer order, and just wait for shit to happen <laughs> and just create memes? I'm like, what the hell? And again, looking at the negative though, dude. Instead of saying like, get out the crew, dude. Pumas kicked ass, dude. They knew. <laughs> they went in with that right mentality, dude. Four zero. The adversity's there. They overcame that shit, and they 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 executed um the way they needed hey, to do. So who's oh, yeah. gonna win on Sunday, Pumas or or Leon? Who are you guys have? Well, this I is gonna come out on Monday, so I hope we'll know a title. But if we were gonna predict, dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Pumas. Dude, fuck it. They 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 have the right mentality right now. I'm going Pumas. I'm going Leon. Paco, who you got? I'm going Leon just because I have a lot of people that we employ in Leon. <laughs> so oh, when there I... it is. Perfect. Perfect. I'm saying Leon just because my mom's from Guanajuato and, you know, so. All right. Yeah. Well, Guanajuato, you know that freaking, there's like the capital of leather over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. All right, man. Well, guys, this dude, this is crazy, dude. Thank you so much for this time. I mean, time flies every time. Dude. Honestly, we, we can go on forever. This is what I like about having guests that, you know, again, tell us their story. They're they're true to themselves. Paco, thank you for being yourself and your true authentic self, man. And thank you for spreading your word, um, telling your story, dude, and inspiring Cordonet, dude, teaching old, you know, old dogs new tricks. Man, I tell you, man, that's amazing, bro. <laughs> you know, we like to always close out with any final thoughts, any new projects you're working on. I know you mentioned a couple of things that you're working on. Would you mind sharing what you what you have in store? Um, and it's just anything that closes out, man. Yeah, man. So uh, for me, I always like to, my intro for my podcast, I, I would love to leave with that. So everybody's like, our families didn't come this far for us to just come this far. And I think that's something that it's my, my motto, my mantra, whatever you want to call it. But when I'm going through goods or I'm going through bads, like just remember that we all come from an immigrant family. Like our parents, did your mom, did your dad cross the border for <clears throat> where you're at? Or should you get inspired by that? Because if you want the best motivational speaker, like you don't have to go look at Tony Robbins. Just look at your mom or your pops, you know? Like they're fucking hustling. Look at their hands. Look at your pops' hands, pinchy this madro, like from working 40 years. Like uh, that should be your motivation, you know? So our families didn't come this far for you to just come this far. And for me, apart from Chad Rosteca, uh, Chad Rosteca took off. We have our employees. It's working, but... I'm a creative. I like to start another. I, I'm starting another business, and it was a whole year in the making. But we have coffee farmers in Guatemala that it took a whole year, but we finally got horchata <clears throat> to infuse together. So our new company is called the Colores Coffee Co Coffee Company. The Colores Coffee Company, and we're gonna be launching our new uh, horchata coffee. And again. We have it here in Southern California, like through the coffee shops. But what about that person that lives in Alaska and Tennessee and Maine? You know, I want them to also have some of the 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 coffee that that reminds them with the essence of horchata. So we're going to be starting that by January 1st. Nice, man. Well, we can't wait to try that out, dude. I'm a big coffee drinker, so I'm looking forward to that. I don't think I've seen that here. Coronel, I don't know if you've seen horchata coffee, man, but I I'm looking forward to that. Um, thank you. Paco, thank you for, you know, coming and talking to us today. Ivan, any final thoughts? Any shout-outs? Uh, real quick, shout-out. Thank you, Zeke and Coronel, for, for having the podcast. Paco, thank you for taking uh, time, of, you know, away from your life to be on our PVA podcast. And real quick, um, I know, Coronel, you asked Paco about parents and, like, their fault. I think that's a big, big topic because I work at, a, like, a non-public school and just there's different trauma that, you know, people go through when they're kids, some go through 
don't have no trauma. Some kids don't have trauma, but that's like a whole another broad topic that, but it boils down to mentality, you know, like everything in your life, I think is true. It boils down to mentality. We all have struggles. Some of us don't have struggles, what have you. And I want to defend the parents a little bit. I know that sometimes life gets hard, but it comes down to mentality. Yeah. That's what it boils down to in the end, mentality. It's a big topic you would like to tackle, man. Oh, dude, mm-hmm. that's right. It, it, it's, the, it's the mindset. Whatever happened to you, did it happen to you or did it happen for you? Mm-hmm. And it's how you see it. Yeah. 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 We have so much control. We have so much control of our of ourselves that we always try to blame it on somebody else. That we realize, what did you do? What can you do to get out of that? You know, and we just focus on other 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 aspects that are, you know, out of our control. Man, be proactive, not reactive, right? Uh, definitely a topic cool we can talk about. about. Yep. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Final thought. <laughs> No, absolutely. Once again, thank you, Paco, for joining us, uh, taking time out of your weekend. And for those of you following and listening to us, please, 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 I really, really highly, highly recommend following El Charro Azteca podcast. Um, really, really great content. Um, it, re- it took me back and it really made me reevaluate myself. Uh, follow them on Instagram. Um, are you on Facebook as well, right? Because I deleted my Facebook, so I... Uh, I don't know. Damn, son. <laughs> no wonder. I thought you blocked me, man. No, well, man he's he's a demographic morning. for Facebook, bro. No, it's dude, it's, no, it's a process, bro. Little by little. I'm getting there. <laughs> but again, uh, El Charro Azteca, Instagram, El Charro Azteca podcast. You can follow them. And you know who I'd like to really, really talk to as well is uh, Conrado. Bautista. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to talk to him too. He is also uh your partner in crime, uh the Charro Steca podcast. So saludos yeah. para él. Uh saludos to everybody who works with you and uh you know we we hope uh wish you nothing but success. Hey gentlemen, thank you very much. This was really, really, really fun. Um kind of just just chatting it up. Time fucking flew for me, like especially for real? time. I wish it was longer, but you know, if you guys I would love to do this again, man. Maybe in my podcast, maybe I'll come back on yours. Yeah, but uh, this is yeah. this is fun, dude. This is really fun, and I think the, uh, I think this is just tapping uh, the iceberg tip of the of a good conversation that that both of our platforms, you know, both of our communities, your community, my community, and we could both we could both help our people. Our, our vehicle is charreria and e-commerce. Your vehicle is the porra del tri, but it doesn't have to be just that. Like through that vehicle, we could teach people culture we could teach them self-development we could motivate them you know it doesn't just have to be el la porra it could be a, a community no i love that man thank you and I, I think well said that's that's our goal right is to build that community hear stories get you know get that voice out there because we have a lot of great stories and a lot of great people in our community that are doing amazing things and Paco is a great testament of that um, so again, look forward to that connection and that, you know, hey, this is just a beginning, like you said, tip of the iceberg, who, you know, we look forward to that relationship with you. Uh, for me personally, dude, I'm going to get a freaking chatter outfit, dude. I want to wear that to my freaking next job yeah. interview. Hey, Walk hey, in and be like, what? hey, forget do, about, forget about that three suit. It's that chatter outfit and be like, dude, what are you doing? Like, hey, dude, it just, you know, hey, this is who I am. This is my culture, right? Uh, but I don't know if they have it in my size, so I might have to go to the kid's side. Hey, hey, here's Spock the thing. Hey, go ahead, go ahead, here, go ahead. Here's the thing. What you could do is, Ivan, you order one for your Chucky doll. Y luego se la pasas al Z. Let me... <laughs> <laughs> also, All one, right, man. One more, thing, one more thing before we leave. I, for, I completely forgot. And I, I forgot to mention in, in my closing. Paco, if anybody wants to order your book, uh, how do they order your book? On Amazon. So it makes it easier. So if you go to Amazon and just put Agarra al Rollo, for sure it's going to be like the first one. You could uh, you could put it, on, if you have a Kindle, uh, it's a Kindle version. And if not, then just order the paper copy. It's like $9.99. It's honestly, it's like an hour, it's like an hour, hour, hour read around there. I try to go straight to, to the point. I don't like those big that like are dragging. And then I think by popular demand, Hopefully by the time this podcast comes out, I will have an audiobook, an audible. Oh, but, nice. uh, so you could kind of hear me because honestly, the book, if you read the book, it's una pinche regañada. <laughs> <laughs> Pero when I wrote the book, la regañadas to me. Like that book is the one that I fucking read when I'm feeling like shit. And I'm like, I need to snap out of it. And I'm glad that is relating to a lot of other people. 
And a lot of people are like, fuck, stop regañando me. You know that 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 meme when that guy's like, yeah, way. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> and I'm glad that the shoot is fitting, not just for everybody, like not just to me, so, but for everybody. So, I'm gonna ask a request for you, Paco. Dude, I want I want Chavelo to be the narrator, not you, dude. But Chavelo can do your your narration. That'd be great, dude. Like you, you know, Chavelo, yeah, he's he's trying to motivate you, but he's all regañándote as well, dude. That's that's my goal. Let's do that. Hey, uh, hey, before we leave, I got a question. Hey, Paco, you know how you guys do that charro stuff? Do you do custom sizes? Yeah, yeah. So that's majority of our business. Um, we have a charro suit. It's not cheap. So we have about 100 of them. Yeah. And, you know, there's people that are top heavy, bottom heavy. Like, they're all, like, different. I'm sizes. bottom heavy, by the way. I'm bottom heavy. So, <laughs> <laughs> what she do, said. so, so what we do is... Uh, <laughs> We jump on the FaceTime and I and I help you take measurements like okay. And then from there, I grab your measurements, I grab the picture that you want, like with the suit, and then I send that to my people in Mexico, which is in Jerez, in Jerez, Zacatecas. Uh-huh. And then within a month and a half, I'll have the suit, ship it to you, and you got your suit. And it doesn't matter what. Yeah, color. I I asked because Mariachi Loco, you know, he wears a Dodger uniform. Yeah. We were talking the other day. I mean, I mean, obviously, when fans can go back, he's he's been wanting like a charro suit and there stuff like that. But we weren't really sure of like how to go about it. But now that we know there here, I'm yeah. gonna call this fool as soon as we're done here. I'm gonna like, hey, customize that shit, dude. Customize that yeah. shit. And then, Ivan, for Ivan, whenever you get married, dude, you, that's your fucking wedding. That's your suit right there when you get married, dude. Whenever that happens. Uh, you would, uh, you would check his mom. Girl, I need to find a girl with good credit. Make Chucky's mom a decent woman, dude, and marry her, please. All right, man. But she has to have good credit, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vatos. Well, thank you again, Sargento, from Ivan and Capitan Ivan to El Coronel to, of course, Francisco. Thank you again for your time, Paco. Let's have a good time. Por eso que mi raza no progresa cuando estamos bien unidos la palabra no trapeza. Vamos mexicanos que si podemos, que nos legalicen si lo lograremos. That shit looks legit, dude. You look, you look a badass. You feel like you're about to go and do like a serenata and conquer, you know, the world, you know? Conquer your white girl, your white girlfriend, your oh, white dude, wife. She eats that up, man. That's how I do. She loves this culture, man. That's how, that's how we ended up together. Bro.